In this lesson, we're going to learn about functions and what it means for them to be increasing, decreasing, or constant. Then, we'll learn how to write the intervals where each of these phenomena is occurring. Let's begin by understanding what increasing, decreasing, and constant are. Let's take a look at three graphs. Here's the first graph. Notice if I look at that graph from left to right, that the graph is moving upward. When the graph is moving upward, as we go across from left to right, we say that the function is increasing. Consider the second graph. Notice if I follow that graph from left to right, the graph is going downward. When the function is moving downward, we say that it is decreasing. The third possibility is this. Notice that this graph is a perfectly horizontal line. It neither increases nor decreases. In fact, its height never changes this function is said to be constant. Often functions will change throughout. Consider the graph seen here. Notice in the beginning, the graph is moving upward. Then, it changes directions and begins moving downward. Then it changes directions again and moves upward. This function goes from increasing to decreasing to increasing again. Let's take a look at some examples so that we can understand increasing and decreasing a little bit more. In exercise one, Mr. March decides to go on a hike in the Adirondack Mountains with his wife. He measures how high up the mountain they climbed during their trip. He created a graph to show their height on the mountain at a given time. The Adirondack Mountains are located in New York State. It's a beautiful large park with gorgeous hiking trails, beautiful waterfalls, and majestic views of mountains and valleys. Here's the graph that Mr. March created. Notice on the x-axis is the amount of time since they left, and the y-axis shows their height in feet. The graph originally is increasing. Then the graph becomes constant. Then the graph is decreasing. Then the graph is constant again, and finally, the graph decreases to the end. Let's answer some questions about this graph. Question number one. Over which intervals of time is their height above sea level increasing? Take a look at the graph. Where is the graph increasing? The graph is increasing in this section here. I'll draw two blue lines and then focus down on the x-axis. Between 0 and 5 is where the graph is increasing. I can write this as a single compound inequality. 0 is less than x is less than 5. Or I can write this using interval notation, which is 0, 5. It doesn't matter which of the notations you use, a single compound inequality or the interval notation, you should choose the one that's the most comfortable for you and that you prefer. Question number two asks over which intervals of time is their height above sea level decreasing? Once again, we look at the graph. Can you identify places on this graph where the function is decreasing? These two sections right here. We're going to have to write a separate interval for each. Let's start with the first one. I draw my blue lines and I look at the x-axis between 10 and 15. I can write this as a single compound inequality, 10 is less than x is less than 15, or using interval notation. Now I move on to the second interval. I draw my blue lines and I look at the x-axis. Here from 20 to 30 is where this section of the graph is decreasing. Again, I can write this as a single compound inequality or using interval notation. Question 3 asks, over which interval of time is the height above sea level constant? Again, we look at the graph. Identify the sections where the graph is constant. There are two of them. I draw my blue lines, and I look at the x-axis from 5 to 10 minutes. So I write that interval using a single compound inequality or using interval notation. Finally, I move over to the last section, draw my guidelines, and look at the x-axis 
from 15 to 20. Again, I can write that as a single compound inequality or using interval notation. And now I've used my graph in order to identify where the function is increasing, decreasing, or constant. Again, it doesn't matter which type of notation you use, the inequality or the interval notation, you should use whatever is the most comfortable for you. In exercise two, we have a graph that shows the value of the stock market over a period of time on a day. The stock market is a place where you can buy shares of companies. Suppose you decide you want to own a piece of the Coca-Cola company. You can go to the stock market and buy a share of Coca-Cola stock. Now you own a piece of the company, even if it's a very small piece. And with some companies, if they make a profit, you might even get a part of the profits. Here's the graph that shows the value of the stock market over a 30 minute period on a given day. This graph, you can see, increases and decreases at various spots throughout the day. We want to answer the questions over which intervals of time is the value of the stock market increasing, decreasing, or constant. Please pause the video here and see if you can write these intervals. When you're ready, come back and we'll compare answers. Let's compare answers. The first question asks over what intervals of time is the stock market increasing? There are two places on the graph where the graph is increasing. If we look at those pieces and look down to the x-axis, we see that the first one happens between 5 and 10. We can write that using a single compound inequality or using interval notation. The second place on the graph is between 20 and 25 minutes. Again, we can write that interval using interval notation or a single compound inequality. The second question asks over which intervals of time is the value decreasing. Once again, we look at the graph to identify the parts where the function is decreasing. We see there are three of them. We examine carefully each section and look down at the x-axis to write our intervals. The first interval is from 0 to 5, and again, we can use whichever notation we'd like. The second interval is from 10 to 15. Again, we write that using interval notation or a single compound inequality. The third section is from 25 to 30. Again, we write our inequality and our interval notation. There are three intervals where the stock market value decreased during this period of time. Problem three, over which intervals of time is the value of the stock market constant? We look at the graph and look for the section that is constant. We then look down to the x-axis to get the values from 15 to 20. So the stock market value was constant from 15 to 20. In exercise three, we have a generic graph of a function on the coordinate plane. We want to answer the same questions over what intervals of x is the function increasing, decreasing, or constant. We very much follow the same process that we already have. Let's begin by exploring the graph. Put your finger on the graph on the left and follow it across from left to right. In the beginning, the function increases. Then it changes to decreasing, and then it changes back to increasing. The first problem says over what intervals of x is the function increasing. We identify on the graph the places where the function is increasing. There are two of them. We look at them one at a time and we very much follow the same process that we did before. We use our blue lines or index cards and we put it on each side of the graph. Now we look at the x-axis. The function is increasing from negative 5 to negative 2 and so we write that interval as a single compound inequality or using interval notation. Then we look at the second part of the graph. The interval here on the x-axis is from 3 to 5 and so we write 3 less than x less than 5 or the interval notation 3 comma 5. We've now answered question 1. Question 2 over what intervals of x is the function decreasing? Once again, we look at the graph and we identify the areas where the graph is decreasing. 
there is one of them. We look at the x values to see where that occurred. The boundaries are from negative 2 to positive 3. We write that as a single compound inequality or using interval notation. We've now answered problem 2. Problem 3. Over what intervals of x is the function constant? We look at the graph. We have no regions where the function is constant on this one, and so the answer is simply none. There are no cases on this graph where the function is constant. Let's look at another example. Exercise 4. Over what intervals of x is the function increasing? Over what intervals of x is the function decreasing? And over what intervals of x is the function constant? Please pause the video here and try this example. When you're ready to compare answers, come on back. Let's compare answers. The first question asks over what interval of x is the function increasing? We look on the graph and we see that the graph is increasing here. We look at the boundaries on the x-axis. The graph is increasing from negative 4 to positive 2. So we write that interval using a single compound inequality or using interval notation. Question 2. Over what intervals of x is the function decreasing? We look at the graph again and we identify the region where the graph is decreasing. We look at the boundaries on the x-axis and we see that the graph is decreasing when x goes from 2 to 6. So we say that the graph is decreasing over the interval from 2 to 6. Question 3. Over what intervals of x is the function constant? We look at the graph and we see that there are no sections where the function is constant. So the answer to this question is simply none. Our last exercise is for you to try, but before you do, take a look at this graph. Instead of being straight segments, this time we have a curve. But notice the graph is moving upward, increasing, and then it changes direction and starts going downward. There's a point in the middle where the graph changed direction. That point is called a turning point, or a vertex. I'd like for you to please take a moment, pause the video here, and see if you can write the intervals where the function is increasing, decreasing, and constant. Let's compare answers. Over what intervals is the function increasing? If we first look at the graph and see that the graph is increasing from the beginning up until that point where it changed direction. If we look at the x-axis, that's from negative 5 to negative 1. And so that's the interval over which the function is increasing. The second question asks us over what intervals of x is the function decreasing. Once again, we look at the graph and we see where that happens. We draw our boundaries and we look at the x-axis. From negative 1 to positive 4 is the region where the graph is decreasing. And so we write that interval. Be very careful. Sometimes people make a mistake and they read the number off of the y-axis. When we write increasing and decreasing intervals, we are always writing the numbers from the x-axis. Finally, over what intervals of x is the function constant? In this case, none. It is never constant. In our next video, we're going to learn about how to write increasing, decreasing, or constant intervals when the graph has an arrow on the end. That's a little bit different, and so that's what we'll look at next time. For now, you have everything you need to know to get started on working with increasing, decreasing, and constant intervals on a function. Remember, you can learn more about functions in Mr. Dory's Algebra Handbook.